Well, it's that time of year, the community soccer team starting up, the t-ball, the baseball. Preschoolers to teens, kids are preparing to take in or to take on one another. Whether it's recreational motiva or more competitive, there are things that parents and coaches should keep in mind so that everyone benefits. Let's remember what the goal is here, to have some fun and learn some life skills. Todd Herman is the founder of Peak Athlete. You work with lots of athletes who are at a point where they're very serious. Yes. We're not maybe talking about them. We're going to talk about the athletes that are out there um, to have fun, to learn to kick a ball, to learn some life skills. Yeah. But even though they're doing that, we need to have a plan. As parents, we need to help our kids yeah. get out there and get the most of their experience. Absolutely. And a big part of sport is sort of managing expectations. Mm -hmm. And if you have, if you're just putting someone into, say, you know, beginning soccer or something like that, or even later on when they're 13 or 14, they may be advancing into higher levels of sport, manage the expectations. So if I'm going into it and I'm, I'm there to have fun, learn and grow and see if I'm really interested in the sport, you're going in with a different expectation than someone who is there to try to maybe get a scholarship later on in life. Mm -hmm. And when we manage those expectations properly, we can, we won't get as, we won't be as hard on ourselves because we are approaching it with a better mindset than comparing ourselves against this person that we see on the nightly um, sports highlights who's doing all these amazing plays. Well, if I'm just doing this recreationally, uh, I'm there to have fun and learn and grow and, and try to make myself better. And you're exactly right. Like This is about developing life skills. Um, the great thing about sport is it, to learns, uh, it teaches uh, athletes oh, so much. about leadership, about yeah. goal setting, and even just living an active lifestyle. So going with better expectations is really, really important. And as parents, we need to help set that up from the get-go when they're hitting the soccer field yeah. for the first time. You know, let's go, let's have fun, let's eat our orange, um, let's play well and nicely as part of a team. And then as they build their skills, the parents need to have, a, and the coaches, yeah. need to have a part in managing, you know, here's what we're going for now and how are you feeling about that? Give them something really specific. It's the, one of the worst, uh, it's one of the biggest mistakes coaches make is they're not specific about what they want their athletes to achieve in a specific game. Give them three things. Um, three is an important number. Same with seven. That's why our phone numbers are in seven. The brain remembers numbers that are three and seven very easily. I did not know that. Yeah, and so give them three things to focus on for that game, whether it's, okay, I want you to really focus on if it's soccer. Um, let's really make a lot of um, quick, accurate passes. Let's stay tighter tied together as a group, especially if they're younger, and when we're in the offensive zone, kick. Just kick the ball at the net. We can't win games if we don't score, right? So it gives them something very uh, uh, specific and focused to work on. And is that what our brain likes? Well, it is, because our brain is what's called teleological, which means that it's constantly goal-seeking. Um, the, average, the average human has roughly between 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day. The average person. High-performing people in sports and business have between 15 and 18,000 thoughts. And the reason between the numbers is because high performers are, have focus and they have goals. It's very important. And so the reason people get distracted and have all these thoughts is because their brain goes, do you want this? Do you want this? Please pick something. Hey, how about this? No, look at that. Does that interest you? <laughs> you're, you're, you're inside my head and <laughs> my head is spinning like this. And you can see how you would get distracted. I love this. Pick three things. Today we are going to do... This, you know, we're going to work on this, yeah. this, and this. And another big tip is have a plan going into a competition or a game. So parents, one of the biggest things parents make the mistake of doing is they always ask questions like outcome questions like, did you win the game? Did you score the goal? And things like that. Well, what we're teaching our kids is that kids feel love from parents based on approval and things like that. And so when you're asking them questions that are outcome orientated, the message that's being sent is... Unless I do those things, I'm not going to get approval from you. So it's better to ask, how did you feel about your game today? How did you feel about your play? Oh. Hey, uh, did you learn anything new out there? Those are the things that really what we're trying to put in, why we're putting them in sport to begin with, is get them to learn and grow and feel better about themselves, right? Those it's about building confidence. Excellent points. Yeah. Outcome-oriented questions are not the way to go. Absolutely. Hmm. And I You've mean, got good points. <laughs> we well, should check out your website. It's peakathlete.com. Exactly. Todd's got lots of great information on there. And you can think about these things from the, when the kids are little, and then you change and bob and weave as they get older and their goals the change. principles don't change. There you go. P the peakathlete.com. Thank you Absolutely. for Thank coming you. in, giving us some great tips as we head into the season where the kids are going to be out there, they're going to be running around, and they're going to be doing lots of good stuff.